Hi everyone, Nancy Morris here, and I'm the author of A Procrastinate Now, Rethinking Time Management, and an Applied Business Psychology Specialist. So what is business psychology? In a nutshell, it's when we study the science of how work impacts an individual and how an individual impacts work. So that's my area of expertise, particularly in small and medium-sized businesses. That's where I focus my attention. The reason why I've made this video today is I got an email from David the other day and uh, he asked such an important question that I thought in response to him I would produce this video but make it available to everybody. Um, he writes to me with regard to this particular book and um, the, the question is really, it really is interesting and it's really applicable not only to people who are reading a book or, um, you know, going to some sort of uh, training course or something like that but generally speaking it relates to change and why we don't necessarily like change but anyway I'm, I'm going to read this email to you now and uh, here we go so dear Nancy I heard you on my local radio station a few weeks back about your new book procrastinate now rethinking time management I really liked what you were saying about the positive benefits of what is usually thought of as a bad behavior being procrastination Understanding procrastination is important to me, particularly at work, so I didn't waste any time in downloading the free book you make available from your website. Thank you for that, Dave. I appreciate that. I read the two introductions, and I thought they were really interesting. But since then, I haven't read a single word, and I don't understand why. The irony that I'm procrastinating about reading a book about procrastination doesn't go unnoticed. And I'm sure the reasons why I'm procrastinating are explained in the book. Can you please help me understand why I'm not reading a book that would clearly help me be more productive? So congratulations, David, for you or to you for, for sending me the email. Because it is a common problem, isn't it? You know, we, we get these books. We, oh, you know, it looks really good. I'm going to read this book. Or we download a program or a course. Or we buy some DVD to improve some area of our life. And then it just sits there and it does nothing. So I'm going to um, answer as best I can, David, your question. I'll have to respond in general terms, of course, because I don't know you. But um, I will give you the information. Yes, it is explained in the book, but that doesn't help you right now. So um, I'll, I'll give you an, an outline and an overview of some of the reasons why perhaps you're not reading the book itself and uh, why for other people, why, why you're not, you know, listening to that program or, or making that change. But I'm going to start with explaining it from an example from my own life. So a number of years ago, back in the 1980s, um, so I've just dated myself, um, I too had a book given to me. And I read the cover, the back cover, the front cover. I flipped through it a bit. I looked at the table of contents. I thought, oh, yeah, this is really good. This is really timely. I really need to be reading this right now. Um, so sure enough, I started to read. And I got partway through chapter one, and I slammed the book shut. And I didn't touch it again for weeks, and probably weeks. And there was a really interesting reason why. And I, I did, it took me a little while to figure it out, and this was quite a long time ago, but I figured it out. Before you think to yourself, oh, you, you know, you didn't read it, Nancy, because you were afraid of change. That would be a myth. The notion that we're afraid of change is wrong. It's, it's a myth. Our brain loves change. Our brain engages with new and novel things, and it, it wants them. And you'll recognize this for yourself when, for example, you do the same thing over and over again, and every day seems like Groundhog Day, you know, and we're, we're doing all that sort of stuff. That doesn't feel very positive, does it? In fact, it feels quite negative. The brain loves new things, and in order to, to have new things, you are creating change all the time. So it's not the process of change that we're concerned about. It's what, what happens during and after the change. It's what might be at risk that we have a concern about. And so in relation to reading a book, which, you know, this particular book uh, we're talking about now, but in relation to reading a book, there's usually three primary reasons why we're procrastinating about it. So just a little heads up, I'm going to give you a little insight into the book. Procrastination is a wonderful thing. Procrastination is a wonderful thing because 
it's not actually um, some bad personality flaw. Procrastination is your higher level thinking telling you that something about the thing that you want to do or the task at work that you're being asked to do, whatever it happens to be, something about that is causing you some sort of concern or fear. So it's the same with the idea of not reading the book in the first place. So let me go over the three primary reasons why you might not be picking up this book, David, and, and reading it. And it's not because you're worried about change. What you may be concerned about is, as you're reading, maybe you think there's a task or, or an exercise or, you know, you think you might have to be really reflective or something like that, and you're not feeling confident in your ability to do it. Maybe you don't think that, that you've got the skill to do the task or something along those lines. And so that causes you a little bit of concern. What if I'm asked to do something I don't feel confident about? The second reason might be, maybe I'm going to be asked to do something and it's just going to show me that I'm not very good at something. I'm going to find out that perhaps I'm not as smart as I think I am, or perhaps I think to myself, oh, I already knew that. Why have I not, why have I not applied that already? Um, and it's almost like a measure of incompetence, or we perceive it to be a measure of incompetence. It's not, but we perceive it to be that way. So maybe there's something about the book or something about what you think might happen that your concerns are going to feel incompetent. And associated with that is reason number three, and that's the idea that we're going to be judged by other people. So maybe somebody knows you're reading this book or, or uh, have this book and they're waiting for you to do something. They're waiting for you to create some sort of wonderful nirvana or some massive change, you know, and they're judging you. That's what you think is happening or could happen. So those three things, I don't feel very confident or I possibly might not be confident to do the things that are being asked of me in the book or the book is going to point out something to me that I am incompetent in. Adults in particular do not like to be perceived as being incompetent. It's something we avoid. It's a real fear. So we'll just not do anything that might bring us to, to a place of feeling incompetent. Or the third one, a place of feeling judged. So those three things may be the underlying concerns that you have that is signaling your brain to have you put the book down. Because your brain is going to do anything to avoid stuff you don't want to do, to avoid the things that may cause you to feel judged incompetent or feel a lack of confidence. So instead of, you know, giving in to that by putting the book down, recognize that perhaps, hey, yeah, this, this might challenge me a little bit, and that's okay. Like, change your mindset to being curious and and really what I want to find stuff that's interesting in this book because the thing to remember too about my book or anybody else's book at all you don't have to do anything you can read the book and change any nothing so nothing is required of you to make a change nothing there's there's no requirement just because you read a book does not mean you have to do anything about it you can if you wish and if you don't wish then you don't and that's absolutely fine so that's another myth. People think, oh, I'm, you know, if I read this, then I must do A, B, C, D. No, you don't. Just read the book. Just read the book, David, and recognize that the reason why you haven't been is because there's something underneath it that's causing you some concern. That concern is not change. Your brain wants change. Your brain wants new things. All you have to do is, you know, drive home differently from work or try a new restaurant, or, you know, go somewhere different in the neighborhood. And your brain will be more attentive to the space that you're in, because it loves that sort of stuff. So don't think it's it's a concern about change, because change doesn't isn't required, meaning, you know, you read the book, you don't have to do anything about it. Um, but you allow your brain to be curious about what's in the book, and just read it, and be open to it. But those are probably the reasons why you're, you're not picking up the book, because they are, as shown in science, the reasons why many people do not engage with things that they know could benefit them. Um, we, we're all guilty of sort of, you know, the, the treadmill that sits in the corner of the room and, and we throw towels on it to dry. You know, I mean, most people have something like that in their house. 
many people have books in their house that they they know are um, in some way beneficial, and they they just don't touch them. And it's it's because of what happens during and after. What what is what do I think is going to be required of me? And there's nothing required of you. So uh, again, David, thank you very much for the question. I hope that's helped you to pick up the book. Uh, there's, of course, more information in the book and some other potential reasons why you might be procrastinating about the book. But those three are key reasons why we procrastinate. And that's why it's really important to understand what procrastination is. It's pointing to things like not feeling confident, worried about being in feeling incompetent or worried about being judged. Procrastination is pointing to those things. So your job then is not to stop procrastination. Your job is to recognize what it could be pointing to and then dealing with, with that. And, and in this case, just moving forward and saying to yourself, I'm going to be curious about this book and see what I see and just carry on and, and just enjoy that process. Um, so I appreciate the question. I hope I've answered that question. Of course, if I haven't, feel free to email me and anybody else who's listening in, do feel free to, to email me, nancy at nancymorris.com. And if you have a question, I tend to answer all the questions that I get. Um, but I may do some more of these videos. I've done them in the past, and people really appreciate them. So, again, David, thank you very much. Um, and, uh, you know, get in touch if, if you have any further questions. Thanks. Take care. Bye.